All right. Hey guys, Avi here and welcome back to our web development series. Now we left off, we had covered what external CSS was. We created a style.css file, we added some nice CSS, we modified the paragraph tags, the header tags, even the body tag, and then we got this nice output. But honestly, the background color looks really bad right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to white. In today's lecture, we're gonna be learning about a cool concept known as classes and IDs. Let's go ahead and add another paragraph tag, okay? Um, I'm going to call this paragraph tag. Um, I want this paragraph tag's color to be blue. So I'm going to say this is some blue text. Okay. That's one. And then I'm going to go ahead and add one more. And I'm going to say this is some black text. All right. So some simple paragraph tags I've added over here. And if you refresh, you see that immediately it's all red. How can I make this paragraph tag be blue? and this paragraph tag be black. Well, that's what we're gonna be learning today using classes and IDs. Classes and IDs allow us to target specific tags, specific objects in our HTML and apply CSS to them. Currently what's happening is when we, see, when we say P and then give it CSS properties, we're modifying every single paragraph tag in our HTML web page. It doesn't matter where it is, it doesn't matter how it is, that paragraph tag will be modified. But guess what? We don't want to modify every single paragraph tag. We want to modify specific ones. We want this one to be blue, not red. We want this one to be black, not red. So what we're going to be doing is adding a class to this paragraph tag. Classes and IDs are attributes of the tag. Just like href was an attribute, just like source is an attribute, class and ID are an attribute. So you're going to go ahead and say class is equal to, and I'm just going to call this black, okay? It's not a great class name, but it works for now. And now, how do we call the black class in our CSS? Well, we can't just say black. That doesn't work. But instead, what you do is you put a period before it. When you say dot black, you're referring to the class black. Okay? And now if I say color is black, black, and refresh, we now get this is some blue text. So I screwed that up a bit, my bad. I'll go ahead and put this over to the black text. And now for our blue text, let's go ahead and use an ID. Just like class, it's gonna be the same attribute, ID, blue. But instead of using a period for IDs, we use a sharp sign. Sharp sign blue, color blue. All right, refresh. And now we get, this is a blue text, this is some black text. So immediately you can see what classes and IDs allow us to do. They allow us to target specific tags, specific objects on our web page, and modify them using CSS. If we didn't have classes and IDs, how would we be able to, you know, select something specific on this website? Like make this heading blue instead of green like the rest, or make this text bigger than the rest of the paragraph tags if all we can modify is all the paragraph tags. Now I know what you're thinking. What's the difference between classes and IDs? Well, th there is one major difference that is supposed to be in HTML and CSS, and that's that you use classes for multiple objects. If you're modifying five paragraph tags, 10 paragraph tags, 10 of these paragraph tags should be blue and have bigger font size, you would say class black. But if you were modifying one image, one link, one paragraph text, then you'd be using an ID. Classes are used for many tags, IDs are used once. Now that's just the basic principle. Sure, you could use an ID multiple times, but at the end of the day, just go ahead and follow the format that's given. Now, the last thing before I end this lecture, we're gonna be covering something known as pseudo classes. This is by far one of the coolest things in CSS. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add an anchor tag, all right? A href Wikipedia. I believe we did it for the image, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it again. HTTP wikipedia.org, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and end it. Um, and I'm going to go on. Uh, this is a link and I'll close it. So refresh. And we now see this is a link. Now I'm sure you've seen on websites all over that when you hover over something, it changes color. When you click on it, it might change color. There's all sorts of fun, cool, nifty tricks with CSS. And one of them is pseudo classes. Pseudo classes by far are really, really fun. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is the basic concept of a pseudo class is you have a tag, you have some sort of object, and then there's different CSS properties that you can apply based on what the user is doing. 
For example, if the user is hovering over our link, I want to change the font color to orange. We can go ahead and say a colon hover, and then in your curly braces, go ahead and say color orange. Okay, refresh, and now when I hover over this link, you can immediately see that it turns orange. This is a pseudo class. You have your object, a colon, and then a pseudo class, which is like hover, you have visited, you have active. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Let's go ahead and say a visited. So once I visited the link, it should maybe turn, um, uh, let's go ahead and say red, okay? And then let's go ahead and say a active. So this is when I'm pressing down on the link, I wanna make this uh, green. All right, so I've already been to the link before, so that's why it's showing me red already. But now if you notice, if I click down on the link, it turns green. So a active is called when I click down on the link. A visited is called when I have gone to the link and I come back to the web page. And a hover is called when I hover over the link. Now this is not just for links, all right? This can be used for any property. If I hover over a paragraph tag, over the entire body, over a header tag, you can apply these pseudo classes to any tag you want. Now these aren't the only pseudo classes that exist. There are multiple ones. There's highlight, there's uh, hover, there's first child. There's all sorts of different pseudo classes you can explore and learn. But in this video, we're just covering three. All right, that's it from my side. A quick recap. We learned about classes and IDs. Again, classes are used for multiple tags. IDs are used for single tags. And both of them are attributes that allow us to modify specific tags. And then we learned about pseudo classes. Pseudo classes are properties you can add on to different tags, different objects, and that perform cool CSS properties when you do things like hover, when you visit, when you click. All of those can be modified using CSS and pseudo classes. That's it from my side, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.